Hello, everybody. Welcome to Level Up Circle TV. But before I actually bring in my sisters, I want you guys to take your time and really look at all this beautiful and handsome faces. This is a legacy born from one of our dear sisters, Nick. And this is her project from heart. Imagine all those people being here and also really analyzing all and all that what they have to give. Are you guys ready? I hope so. So, oh, I don't want to take it out. It's so pretty. Just leave it be. And we're just talking without our faces. What do you think? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. All right, so let's go ahead and reveal. And if you can notice, there's a thing in there. It's because my dog keeps moving my, my video cam. So that's what's happening, okay? And yeah, it's going to be that way for a little bit until he stops moving all my camera equipment. That's part of my life. I have too many dogs, I guess. So you guys, I want to be thankful that you're here. Team Replay. Or if you're alive in our YouTube channel, remember if you are on LinkedIn and you're commenting, I can't show it on TV. You can download E360 TV on Apple's um, our Amazon Roku channel, um, Amazon Fire, um, Android. We're going to add Samsung in January. So we're increasing our um, distribution channels for TV in the near future. So I have MP3. Uh, which is an Apple, Spotify, you can actually listen to our yesterday's conversation and their parting message for some of the authors who were live with us. And you can listen to all of your favorite podcasts. So Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, you name it. But apparently, I didn't know about this, my husband told me, um, did you know that there's internet radio? And I was like, what? I thought, you know, Spotify and all that was already internet radio. And he's like, no, there's a different internet radio from the UK. And so that's my manifestation next year. I'm taking all of publicity. So I'm going to look into going into internet radio as well. Um, right now we're growing to 80 countries or more plus the six continents and we're going to take over all the way because we have a lot of work to do and i'm thankful that i'm able to do it and i'm bringing everybody so whoever's listening to this and you would like to be part of our level up circle let me know we will be happy to have you and get your message out there it is time for individual people to really get their message out Another thing is the world has gone bonkers, right? We have wars, too many wars going on. And instead of having the media, and I'm talking about the media, the conglomerate, telling us what's down in your country, I invite you to come to me and tell us exactly what is happening to your country. And that is where I want the internet radio to go in because we want news that are fresh. We want news that's happening and we want the world to know what are you going through right now wherever you are because i guarantee you it's going to help other people and that is the point is to help others and be informed of what is going on around the world all right but today it's thanksgiving i wish i could show you my table but that would be crazy i'll post them um, pictures later but i'm gonna stop talking because it's lonely up here by myself are you guys ready let me look at my sisters because one of them is super gorgeous today mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah 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 <laughs> look at her face she's so she's so serious <gasps> hello sister look at this one right here <laughs> she's shaking her head she's like i'm doing this just for you i'm not happy about this i look pretty but i'm not happy about this Makeup is so not. She looks gorgeous. Makeup is not my thing. <laughs> she, she's like, I did the makeup just for you. My husband looked at me and he went, 
I said, yeah, apparently I'm going on television, so I told Constance that I'm going to, like, make sure I She's so pretty. And my dear sister, Susanna, is actually dressing up in lace. Ooh. See the pressure I put on my sisters? Pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> yeah, you put the pressure on us. <laughs> so, Sister Nicole, what are we thankful for today? That I had an extra hour and a half to do this. Like, holy crap, it takes long to do this. <laughs> Oh, what am I thankful for today? How long do I have? Okay, so as many as we want. We got fifty-six minutes. We're good. First and foremost, always I have to give thanks to my maker. For me, that's God. To whomever else that is, to whoever I wouldn't be here without him. I say him. Um, it's been a crazy year, but a really crazy good year. And uh, sadly, it's probably not been a great year for everyone. So I celebrate my year and I hope to offer blessings to all those that did not have a great year. Um, I miss our sister Christine. Um, I hope she was going to be here with us, but I know our hearts are with her. And uh, latest and greatest to be thankful for. So anthology that's going to come out very very soon december 1st just in time for the holidays and on the heels of a season to be very thankful for so and of course i'm thankful for you too just kidding just you know whatever <laughs> dear sister susanna your turn your turn oh there's there's lots to be thankful for I mean, I think about, I think about my own journey, and it really echoes with some of what Nick already said. Because I know who opened so many doors to allow me to get to where I'm at right now, and I'm just waiting for the next doors to open. And that's thankful. It's like thankful for the doors, even though I don't always know where they're going to go. But that's that's how I was created, and. That's what I'm thankful for. And then looking at this year, and, and yes, it has been a crazy year. And when I look at uh, one of the doors that got opened for me, which began with Nick, when she said, you're going to do this, that's when the first book came out, when we did My Two Cents. Yet for me, I can rattle it off of my two cents, never give up, rattle the wake. Now I have legacy. That's four anthologies in less than six months. And then throw in, just for the fun of it, my first solo book, Search for the Armor of God. The second solo book, which will be Battle for the Armor of God, which comes out next month. And it's like, this is the cover reveal. For that because I haven't shown it to anybody else except for you guys and this is this is the second book and then on the 2nd of January is the third book which is Faith of the Butterfly which is traditionally published my reinvention story so who publishes seven books in six months Susanna Dawn who else what do you mean? Yeah. Hello. It means that I could walk into a bookstore and buy this. And thank God I just about. Just about. <laughs> I mean, like, there's there's the first one. CJ put the second one up. <laughs> so there's the second one. Coming up, coming up. Oh my gosh. When is this coming out? We haven't set the date yet, but it's going to be maybe around the 5th or 6th because it's so after the legacy comes out of December. You've been busy. Yeah, super busy. Very busy. And and are we going to talk about your um, website? Well, yeah, there's, there's it, it grows. Okay, so all the books are connected to the website, but then the website 
now that I had somebody show me how to make it easier, <laughs> sis, and a three hour Zoom call. Um, but yeah, now the website is up, SusannaDonWriter.com, and that's all one word. Then that's where I'm putting more out about moving beyond boxes, beyond about the speaking. It's like right now I need to find some speaking engagements around Orlando at the end of January, some paid speaking engagements, right? We got... I've got a message and I've been blessed at how many people have, have stepped up and said they love this message and it resonates with them. And especially for women to just stop being stuck and move beyond the boxes to shine as your authentic self. Yeah. Yeah. I am stuck in a box right now that um, I'm happy to be in the box for a little bit because I need to know this box. Most of the boxes I've gone out of, I pretty much know the left and right and the wall and the top and the, all the crevices. This box is a brand new box I'm in. So I got to get to know this box until before I get out and just see, okay, how can I help myself first and then move out of it so I can help others? Because it's always start with how do we help ourselves first before we can help others? And, you know, we're talking about things that we're doing but really, I want to talk about how did we get there? The messy side of our efforts can't be seen by anybody. The lack of sleep, the, the stress, mm -hmm. the, you know, the constant thinking, the constant worry. We need to talk about that because that should be something people need to know. And not just say, oh, wow, she's this and that and that and that and that. Because people always want to be where you're at, not knowing that the journey is treacherous and dangerous um, to your mental capacity. So let's start with Nick. Well, first of all, I want to say that Susanna's message resonates so much with me because this year, you know, I'm, I'm before I even met you, I came out of the box, right? That was embracing my back awareness. Um, so meeting you was just another step in the journey that needed to happen because our friendship helped me bloom and as uh, my friendship goes constant it drives me nuts because she just pushes me to new heights um and i know it's because like she said she sees my potential so oh the messy sides um hmm. So back, I would say back in April, when the first anthology launched, uh, someone actually said to me, I noticed you say a lot that you work full time and you run your business part time. Stop saying that. A lot of people do it. Okay. Um, one, I kind of get to say what the hell I want to say. Two, a lot of people do it. And my saying that actually is meant to show people that it can be done and to give praise to those that are doing it. Because it is not easy. You know, nothing is easy for anyone. Everybody is going to, you know, find their own struggles in what they do. But for me personally, I'm, I leave my house at 7 in the morning. I get home at 5 in the evening. Uh, now, I forgot how miserable it could be when you walk out of work and it's dark. You feel like it's 8 o'clock at night. And you get home and you feel like it's time to eat dinner, take a shower and go to bed. Uh, it's only 5 o'clock, Nick. <laughs> you can't get in your pajamas yet. And to keep pushing, it's work. It's work. There's definitely been those midnights where my head's been sewing, saying, are you coming to bed soon? Um, just just five more minutes, just five more minutes, and before you know it, it's one o'clock, right? And you can't not give 100% to your job because that's your livelihood. So it's a struggle to find that balance um, to make sure that you keep all the balls in the air. 
right? That you're giving 100% to your career and that you're giving 100% to your business. And of late, I've had to learn that I now need to split that into equal parts because I need to give time to myself. Otherwise, I'm going to burn out. Thank you for sharing that because... Like I said, people sometimes give us advice. By the way, guys, if we're not asking for your advice and you have good intentions, I know, that's criticism. Sometimes criticism can be taken as, wow, it's positive vibe. Sometimes we're on a low mode and you're criticizing us because we didn't ask for your opinion. We want to throw shit at you. Just want to say that. But you have good intentions. I'm just saying, be self-aware. If we are not asking for your opinion... We're not asking for your opinion, really, period. And I know like, oh, I wish I could tell her this. Great. But there's got to be a way for you to have good intentions. I am so sick and tired of people telling me, oh, I have good intentions. It's, uh, it's well-meaning. We always make excuse for people's bad behavior of self-awareness. And, and I'm, I'm sick of it. Like people DMing me and pitch slapping me, hundreds of them right now. <laughs> And, oh, there's something wrong with this and something wrong with it. I'm like, who the hell are you? I don't know you. I'm glad that you found something wrong. But I know the next word that comes out of your mouth is, it's going to cost you $200 to fix this problem. Listen, buddy, go take a line because there's going to be a lot of problem in my life that you're going to want to fix. But if I'm not asking for it, I don't want it fixed right now. Right? And this talk about balance, F the balance. There's no such thing. Balance means are weird. And I think you have to find within yourselves harmony within that. Um, I had I was in an audio talk with someone. I forgot it was Dr. Ava. I think you know, and it makes sense. Finding harmony in everything that you do, whatever you do. Some of us can do ten things at once. Some of us can do two things at once. The problem with us trying to say we're trying to balance all these two or three things is in the back of your head, you're already putting pressure that you're not balancing things. Go with the moment. If the moment makes you feel like you need to just take a break and do something else, don't feel guilty. Work will always be there, right? There are projects you can't procrastinate though, I'm just saying. But make sure that you don't put that word, I'm going to try to balance. I'm going to try to avoid that word myself because I keep saying that too. But like, Harmony. If I if Nick is happy working at midnight and her husband is probably like mine, get off the TV, get off the camera, get off the computer, get off the phone, like literally all day, all night, right? And I was like, yeah, but when you're trying your business, be patient, right? Because business doesn't grow overnight. Rome wasn't made, you know, overnight. Uh, Canva, who owns, you know, Canva, it's 15, you know, almost pushing 20 years before it became $26 billion company. I'm not saying we're going to get there. I'm saying, how are we going to get there if we don't work hard? But I'm to get, get there, there. What do you mean? I'm going to get there. Right? I mean, but here's the thing. The journey is going to be not really like happy all the time. It's going to be this. But hard work gets you there. And don't think that you're just going to be, oh, I'm going to be a content creator. It's going to be AI doing it. Okay, good for you. But the way we're doing it is different. I'm just saying there's different ways of doing things. And for you to tell people that this is the way you should do it, if you're not asked, that's criticism. I don't need it. I'm just saying. How about you, Sister Susanna? Your turn before I just get on my soapbox. It's been it's, been its own roller coaster. And, and I'm going through... I've gone through a whole lot. I haven't really taken any time off for myself in a long time because it's it's always that that feeling, that pressure of I need to make something happen, I need to do something, need to get something, um, and I've got a lot of stuff. Uh oh, what happened to her internet? There you go. My dog's pushing it. Did Susanna just like pause? She did. 
And she was in the good parts, too. <laughs> Nick, I can't hear you. Somehow you're... Can you hear me still? Oh, yeah. She just went out. And you hear... You feel... You see my... <laughs> it's like crazy. Well, there she is. Um, Oopsie. There you are. I don't know where you went. I... You know, it's the internet. We we have that to deal with too. When when the internet decides to just freeze on you and you just look around and go, what happened? I didn't do anything. I didn't touch anything. <laughs> well, keep us, continue on your thoughts about the messy side of where you're at. Like, let's talk about that. Seven books in six months and people are, Michelle's like, wow, that's a really amazing thing. But get, get us through the process, right? How do we do this? How did you do this? The Okay, so of the seven books, one, the one, the last one that will come out of the seven, that was finished last year, and that's in the publisher's hands, and they're doing it. The other two solo books... The first one was essentially done in 2019, and that's what that's what the big blue ribbon is was a first place award when it was a manuscript for a fantasy book awards. So that was done in 19, and then there's the trying to trying to get somebody to publish it and. And that's a difficult process, which is why I just decided to self-publish it at the end in September. The second book, it was also written, finished a couple years ago. It was a finalist in the same contest a couple years later. So this year, what I've done is I've had a couple of people who know my writing style. They, they just read through it, made some comments. I cleaned it up that little bit and then and then self-published. I found Amber Williams was phenomenal. She asked if she could do the cover and then I told her what I wanted. And that first cover, I'm like, dang, that's exactly it. I didn't know what I wanted. I knew what I wanted on it. Nick and I had talked about some stuff, but the way she did it, it became the template for the series. It's like, so there's more to come. I'm ready to do the third one. It's finding the time because for me, the most energy I get is in the writing and in the speaking. Put me up on stage. I love it. And this is coming from an introvert. If you'd have told me, if you'd have told me a few years ago, I'd be doing this. I'd say, F no, no way. So it's it's tough because so much of it is solitary as well you don't have i mean you two are lucky in that you have other people physically around you i've been on my own for almost four years now where it's just been me and with the pandemic that just made it all the more solitary everybody else in the world was doing zoom calls and having this and I was the introvert. I was still finding myself at that point. So I, nobody checked in on me. And I took that as a sign to not bother anybody because they're dealing with the pandemic. And so I didn't start getting out of my shell until August of 20 when my mom passed away. And then it took a while still to get myself out before coming into last year when I did a total reinvention and coming into this year to take the next step. So it's like last year, the word that was placed on my heart was fly. And that's kind of what I did last year. No, it was faith. Faith was last year. Fly was this year. I'm waiting to see what gets put on my heart, but I have a feeling sore or is what it is because that's the word that still keeps popping up in my head all the time. So it's like, put me on stage, put me, give me that quiet time to write. I can put out all kinds of stuff. These books I wrote, 
the chapters. I love it. But it's it's still not easy because it's solitary. It's going to happen. I have to say, when you come to accept that there's power by really speaking it out there into the universe, there's something very magical that happens. The people that you need to help you accomplish automatically, uh, it's like you're a magnet. They come to you. The opportunities come to you. And, you know, if you really, really, really want it, it's going to happen. But, I mean, my mantra and people have asked me, you know, how is it that you've seen so much success this year? Passion plus desire plus action equals results. You have to have a formula for yourself to get where you're going. You really and truly, yes, it starts with you, but you cannot do it alone. And the sooner you accept that, the quicker you will get where you're going. So, yeah, there's so much to be thankful for this year, not just my personal journey or our personal journeys. Honestly, just so many friends I've made on LinkedIn and yeah. to see their journeys and to see how far they've come since I've met them. It just goes to show you that everyone around you actually is growing. Everyone around you is leveling up. And we keep leveling up because we keep interacting with one another, collaborating with one another, being there for one another. You know, you see us talk about our sisterhood and, and including Christine, but that sisterhood is extended to sisters and brothers around the world. So everybody is leveling up because we're all in the same circle, right? Constance? Level thank circle. you so much for saying that. Yeah, no, thank you so much for saying that because when I created my mission, I said level up the world through education. People automatically think, oh, you're an educator, so only PhDs and DBAs and, you know, doctors are going to be in your circle. I said, who said? What? Leveling up yourself through education, it could be mean you're in a YouTube university. Could be mean you're on a workshop or webinar. Leveling up is just the next step that makes you grow. And and I'm glad that you said what you said about support because how many times did Nick say no to me? More than my fingers and my toes can count. She said no. Well, okay. The 50 Inspirational Project, she had a different expectations on it. But I can see it in her face. She was 50-50. Like, she wanted to say no, but she couldn't say no. <laughs> she was curious. She was like, hmm. And I think what convinced her is that even though her own story was an inspiration, I told her about why I asked her to be in the 50 Inspirational because I was inspired by her story and her showing up. And she got a little emotional when, when I said that because I think sometimes you're going through your own journey and you don't know that you're inspiring other people. So it's kind of like, whoa, I did that. And that, that was a Nick moment. And I think every person that you come across who makes your heart flutter or who gives you hope, who pushes you, you should tell them because sometimes you don't know what you're doing that you're inspiring people. And what you're doing when you're telling them is you're inspiring them to keep doing what they're doing that's positive. It's positive reinforcement. And I think for me, I'm going psychology here a little bit. I think for me, I think Nick didn't have that in her head because she wasn't in that industry that she can do this. Then once we did a 50 inspirational, this lady showed up and I told her, I said, listen, if I could hire you, because I was uh, 
think still doing deanship and I needed to hire a student assistant. I said, if I, if I could hire you and you had an MBA, I'd hire you in a heartbeat because her work ethic was unbelievable. I have worked with 2000 or more employees at all at once. And all I hear, and these are all PhDs, DBAs and medical doctors from Harvard, MIT, and they make excuses left and right. Nick never made one excuse where she can't show up. Nick never said no to me because I don't take no for an answer anyway, but that's not the point. Her work ethic was so strong. I said, yep, that's the person that I want to align myself with because when the tough gets going, you need people that keep pushing because she didn't want me to get let down and I didn't want to let her down. So you see that symbiotic relationship that we have professionally, right? So then from 50 Inspirational, we keep doing it. I was probably spending hundreds of hours behind closed doors because I, I do what I do because I go big or I go home. That's my mantra. And then we did the Global Summit. You know, we have other projects. And Nick's like, hey, how about you go in my, my two cents and self-love? And I'm like, oh, okay. And at that point, I have written two books, one in academic publishing. That's in six different languages. That was a pain. There were nine PhDs in, in that. And uh, yeah, yeah, editing was fun for that, for academic publishing. And then what I've learned is that writing non-academic was a challenge for me. I've been in school for, oh, I, I'm afraid to tell you, but a lot of years. So my brain and my environment is always very rigid and very academic. Right. So then when I wrote my two cents on self-love, I actually told Susanna that I was kind of just very disappointed on on how I wrote my piece. I had the opportunity to break free from academia, yet I structured myself there. So self-awareness was empty on CJ on that one. Very structured. Like this is my two cents on like pretty much because that's how my brain works. But the key is reflecting and learning right? We're always reflecting and learning. That's the only way to level up is reflecting and learning. And surrounding yourself with people like these sisters helps you because they have a different opinion. But you also have trust because there are people out there that are very catty. <sighs> oh, it's just, I think you should do this. Like, I, I don't know. Girl, I didn't ask for your opinion again. I'm just saying, right? But here's the thing. People will always give you their opinion and their two cents on what they're trying to do. But if you're not asking for it, sometimes we don't know how to ask or where to ask or who to ask. It's okay. But at the same time, if you surround yourself with people who know who you are that can level you up, let them. Trust is going to be built. Nick also said no to me to take over the audio room for fifth inspirational. She said Three no's to me, I, I counted. I'm not ready. I don't know what to do. Oh, God, I hate this technical shit. I, I don't want to do this. Right? She literally, she's like, what? And in the first audio room we did, she did. She exited her own self. She's like, see, see what I mean? This is proof. I, I'm not doing this. I said, nope, you're doing this. You'll be ready you're in a month. You're embarrassing me on television? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, no, I'm not doing this. This is proof that I will not take no for an answer. I'm just saying, if I give you ideas that I can think that you can level up, it's not to criticize you that you're not where you're at. It's to level you up where I think you can expand. And you're probably thinking, who the heck are you to tell me how to level up? I have helped thousands of people for free, not no fees or anything, because in my heart of hearts, I was put in this earth to help others see the good side of them, the better side of them, the positive side of them. Life is hard, guys. Life is very difficult from money problems to relationship problems to the environment problems and problems all around. So my thing is I want to, Dr. Newpy would say, glitterify, okay, the world of something positive. But I can't give it to you. You have to take it in from within you. So when I give you suggestions, if you're asking, because I'm not going to give you suggestions if you're like not asking, because again, I see that as criticism. If you're asking, I said, hey, I think you could do it this way better, but I will never give you the answer. I only will push you to the point where you're comfortable or maybe I'll push you 
to the edge where you want to like, oh, I hate her. But I guarantee you, you are going to grow and level up because that's how we do it. And that's how we roll. What are your thoughts? I mean, they're like nodding and they're like smiling. So Nick, tell me a little bit about like, why do you keep saying yes, even though you want to say no to me? Other than the fact that you don't let anybody say no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, something I've kind of, uh, something I realized about me is that I'm really fast to say yes when people ask me for help, but it's not all that easy for me to say yes to myself sometimes. Um, and I know that that has to do with my self-esteem and I know some of that definitely comes from me feeling that I, I don't have enough education. Um, but I'm happy to say, you know, it's been a huge work in progress. Um, and I've gotten much better. I've gotten much better at understanding that, you know, my worst is not just in um, a degree. And yet I have my sister next to me that has born going on her fifth. Uh, but we can respect that each other brings value irrespective of a degree or not. And that's not something that I was comfortable with until I met these girls. Um, I think when I broke my knee and couldn't walk earlier this year, that gave me the courage to say yes to a lot of things. I was just like, okay, I know I'm going to go to therapy and walk again. But what happens if something does happen and it puts me down in a way that I can't get back up. So while I'm up right now, I'm going to say yes to everything. And that's pretty much what I did. Um, and there is one thing about myself. If I commit, I, I commit. That's it. So by putting that, if you want to say almost honest on myself, by saying yes, I had to follow through. And uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful Dude. that I... You said no a lot to me. This is going to change after this TV show. I'm like, mm -mm. you said you were going to say yes. So now I have some projects in the head now. <laughs> Look at her. I say yes to you. But if you tell to your project to help you, but if you tell me, oh, go take this audio room, I'm like, no. When are you going to get to YouTube channel? No. <laughs> so like if it involves me, I, you know, I, I do second guess myself. Um, so don't ever think that the people that you see around you that you think are successful and making so much impact and are so inspirational, you know, that came from someone else to us as well. So if you feel that way about us, it's because somebody else made us feel that way. Mm -hmm. This did not happen overnight. And what's stopping you from sitting right here where I am? Not a damn thing. Nothing. Nothing. Your attitude. Exactly. No, no, your attitude, because a lot of people want to be seen and and heard, but they don't want to give value. I can't have you. I'm sorry. Like, I just, it's not happening. Um, I Before I do go to our sister, Susanna, I wanted to give a shout out to Dr. New because she will be in the TV show next Thursday. And I wanted to give you guys a heads up on what we're going to talk about. Um, she said, using mindfulness as a tool for clarity to redefine your vision so you can see clearly what your mission is. And then she's going to give us two tools. The first one is mantra meditation and mindful communication. And I cannot wait. Mindful communication. Um, and we're going to talk more about that for sure because mindful communication means self-awareness. And just because you have good intentions doesn't mean your message is coming across as that. I'm just saying, right? So, dear sister Susanna, tell us a little bit of, we're almost to the end. I want to start with you and letting us know what is next for you other than the book, right? What are you manifesting? This will leave, by the way, here forever. <laughs> so, what are you manifesting next year that you haven't really thought about? Right, because you said you want to have your your website's already up, 
you're going to want to speak engagement in January in Orlando. You want to also be a DEI consultant. What else is up to your sleeves? And just manifest. Dream it. Make it. What's 2024 look like? 2024, I see another three or four solo books and because one of them is um at least a couple of them are from a science fiction focus uh, and then and then i want i want to build out the armor of god as part of moving women beyond boxes so some people might say, oh, this is all Christian focused or something. It's like the way I approach it, the armor of God is six pieces of armor. I mean, you could put any name on it. It just, these happen to be the six. It's the right name for it. It fits the books. And it's the way to move, gain awareness and move beyond boxes as part of, part of that whole thing. So I wanna see the movement growing and it's not just be speaking and working with companies in, in the U.S., but making it international. I mean, some people will say, oh, that's too fast. You can't do this stuff that quick. And, and I know you got to put a lot of work in. I know how much I've gone through to get to where I'm at. But there's no reason why some of this stuff can't feel like it's overnight when you hit a certain point. And I feel like I'm at that certain point where it's time for the Christmas miracle and time to make next year just blossom and help so many women get beyond the box and help so many companies to break down the barriers. Because when we're covering ourselves in the workplace, especially with women, I hate to do it this way, but business is business. People become depreciating assets when the organization doesn't allow them to be themselves, to be their authentic selves and let them uncover themselves, stop hiding. Don't be afraid that means they're gonna tell everybody everything because most of us, whatever it is that we're hiding, we don't want to tell everybody about it. We just don't want to be worried about if somebody knows what will happen and companies the minute they let those walls go, they're going to see a growth because when wellness happens for grows for us, we put more into everything around us so that it will grow. That's amazing. So we're going to have three to four books. We're going to have speaking engagement. We're going to go globally. Maybe we'll go to Italy. I wanted to go to Italy, drive a Ferrari, go shopping at Louvre. Um, and go to the biggest Hermes store. Why not? That was my, not the, that's the uh, manifestation. We'll combine, in my head. We'll combine them and you, the two of us will end up going and then we'll drag Nick with us and we'll bring Christine and like, we'll just yeah. go off to Europe. Oh my God. I want to go to the, I want to go to Paris and, and drink some, um, uh, what do you call this? Um, coffee. Cause they have the, the best patisserie. Uh, my cousins go there all the time. I'm like, man, you guys are not even funny anymore um but i want to go to sis nick what are you manifesting next year sorry i had to unmute <laughs> what am i manifesting next year oh god um I really want to uh, continue to advocate for mental illness and I want to use all of my faculties to do that. Uh, while it might appear that I am accomplishing things personally, like the anthology um, and early next year starting my own live show, the intent there is really to advocate for mental illness. Uh, there's a lot around me that I've been observing that I want to bring to light. Uh, one of them actually was due to the um, 
Willie Rally in New York City that I got to speak at um, by um, Andrea Sanchez on no, um, November 11th. One of the speakers there highlighted um, featuring stories on the homeless. So I'm happy to say that yesterday I was passing on the service exit that I've passed pretty much for the last year. And there is a lady there that I would always, um, you know, stick my hand out the window as I'm driving by and she would grab whatever was giving her, uh, whether it was something to eat or whatever. And so yesterday I literally pulled on the shoulder and put on my hazards. I know everybody was pissed because <laughs> I, the back of my truck was probably blocking a few people who can't drive. Um, and, you know, I gave her something and I boxed a name. I said, I cannot believe it's almost a year that I've been seeing you. And I don't know your name. And her name's George. And something said to me that I want to know your story. And I want to write your story. And that's because of a gentleman that I met at that rally. His name escapes me right now. But people come into your life for a reason. And when those things happen, pay attention. Um, some thing is speaking to you through someone. So next year for me is going to be a big year, really, of shining the spotlight on others. That's that's really where I, I hope this year, next year. Sorry, who me here? Listen, it's gonna come next year. It's it's gonna come. I I uh, oh okay. My dark circle's not too, too bad. Um, I was talking to Danielle. I was telling Susanna. I was talking to her for her edits of her anthology from nine p.m. till two a.m. Nine p.m. Yeah, and I woke up early this morning to put my stuff in. I literally did my makeup like five minutes before the show so there's really no makeup well whatever it didn't matter i'm like oh dark circle and i'm good anyhow i know that's kind of sound vanity but i, I i'm used to it so I, I i can't handle without just putting some concealer on guys i'm just saying all kidding aside when i'm manifesting for next year so um we have an anthology now with nick but i really want to create an anthology for me and publish it sometime in March of next year. So I'll probably do an author school like January and start in February. And January, I'm going to be one of the speaker for Healthcare Amplified in PodFest, the end of uh, January. Beginning of February, I'll be doing some um, tech stuff with the people that I work with right now for graduation. Um, I'm hoping that I will pass all my classes, <laughs> statistics right now for psychology. Um, and I want to not only publish, but I'm working on three books right now that I'm writing. It's just, it's painful because it's personal. I'm working on a memoir and that feeling of abandonment is real and, um, It's weird when there are holidays here and my grandma's not here. I know she didn't abandon me, but I have guilt. So I'm working on that. And then when Nick talks about mental illness, I do suffer from depression and anxiety. And now I know why, because I have ADHD and it's not easy, but good thing I can vomit on Susanna on all my issue. And Nick's there. Don't cry, sis. I'm just, I'm grateful. This is a, a, a happy cry because even though I'm going through a lot of issues, I pour my energy on those negative feeling and negative thoughts into positive. And if you wonder why CJ does what she does, she's crazy. Yeah, I am. 
I almost died eight times. But I know that there's a reason that I'm still here. And hoping that I can save one more life this year. And more lives next year. Because it's a lonely road sometimes, even though you're surrounded with hundreds of people. It still is lonely when you feel like no one understands you. But when you find your tribe, stay in that tribe. Stay in that circle. And if people judge you, give them a middle finger anyway. It doesn't matter because they're not perfect. No one else is perfect. But the more you talk about what you're going through, instead of all your success, you make people see you as real. I have a hard time doing that. And I apologize for those people who told me that you have accomplished so much. I don't know if I could get there. And I feel like I'm putting pressure on them. Don't. It's my ADHD that's doing that, okay? Um, but I also want to help women who are undiagnosed like me. It took me five psychiatrists to get there. I'm going to make it my mission to find a way to help you, even if you're not diagnosed officially, to help you be... Go move beyond that box like Susanna does. And get you to a point where mentally you're so strong you can't be shaken. If you are going through a tough time right now, whether it's health, financial, or just really something in your head and people tell you you have no reason to be sad, you have no reason to be depressed, it's okay. They don't understand you. But also don't stay down. Find us because we're going to give you homework. And when you're so busy, you forgot that you were even sad. Okay. You forget you're sad. You just keep going. You're like, what was I sad about? I don't remember. Anyway, I have to edit this paper. That's what you're going to do. That's what we want to help you with. And I know in our tribe, we have a lot of people who are going through a lot. We love you. We are so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for Ollie for being here. Dr. New. Um, Raquel, I didn't see your message, but I know she, she got mentioned in here. Uh, Randy, Randy House, I'm glad you made it with all those accidents that's happening. I'm glad you're making it sa safe. Um, and for all my sisters, I'm so thankful for you two ladies. You, you guys already know that, but I just want you to know that I'm very thankful for everything that you have given me, the ones, the efforts that you give me beyond what I see. So the ones that I see and don't see, I'm very thankful. So in this Thanksgiving Day, thank you guys so much for watching us. And thank you to my dear sisters for watching us. Good thing I don't have any um, mascara so it doesn't run down. <laughs> That's all I'm saying right now. I was like, oh, I don't have mascara. I can cry. It's okay. <sighs> it's just I needed to get that out because I am very thankful. And that's a happy cry. And before I end this show... This is another endeavor that I'm doing, guys. I'm actually helping my daughter. She, she's going to need to make money here. But I don't know if you see that. This is a pen. And this is dedicated to my dear sister, Christine, because she likes B uniquely you. So that's a B. This is called Sugar Cubes. And it's Louis Vuitton, of course. I have a lot of Chanel, but it's a pen. And we're going to be selling this, you guys. It's like $10 for the pen. I know it's kind of expensive. But these little things right here is quite expensive. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be making them if you guys help the sister out in here because I got to help another person here <laughs> to make money. This will be something that you guys um, will have. Any last minute for 30 seconds before we end, sisters? 30 seconds. Anything. Susanna, go quick. <laughs> well, okay. So I think my biggest thanks right now. What I'm really most grateful for was the ability to, over this past month, help a sister achieve her dream. For yes. Nick to get her dream achieved, that, that is one of the biggest things for me. Yes. Nick, your turn. 
Uh, I am just want to say that I'm really grateful for my family, the ones that aren't with me right now, and for my darling son and my wonderful husband, and that my greatest wish this Thanksgiving for everyone is that all your dreams come true. Put them out there and find us. Bye, everyone. We love you guys. See you next time.